Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, thank you for, again, listening to my show on real freedom, why franchises are worth considering, and how they can be used for building wealth. I'm going through my book. We are now on chapter eight on that. Uh, next steps after investing. Again, I am Greg Moore, author of Real Freedom, Why Franchises Are Worth Considering and How They Can Be Used for Building Wealth. Uh, we've gone through quite a bit so far, seven chapters of my book. Uh, if you need a copy of my book, don't hesitate to let me know. Send me your address and I will send you a copy of my book, free copy, free copy of my book on that. So <clears throat> this week, we are going through chapter eight, uh, next steps after investing. So you just invested into a franchise, gone through the entire process with me, and we found a franchise for you. You're loving it. You signed the agreements, paid the franchise fee. So what's next? Step one, training. Of course, first thing you're going to do is you're going to get some training. For my training, when I got into my franchise, I spent about three days up at their offices. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, one of my clients, Brian, spent four at the uh, franchise's home office. So it's going to vary by franchise. Uh, different franchises will be doing different things. Mine was a telecommunications consulting franchise. Uh, Brian's was more of a remodeling type franchise. So mine was mostly all paperwork. And they showed exactly how, exactly how to use their systems and processes in minute detail uh, throughout the day. Uh, Brian's was doing remodeling, so they went through remodeling with them. He set up the project using their software systems, how to enter their information into the software systems, how to present it to his clients, how to present the end product, how to follow up with clients, billings, collections. Uh, for Brian, what they did was they actually uh, flooded a room and put him on the equipment, showed him exactly how to dry everything out with the fans going, how to take down the walls that were water damaged. Probably the first and last time he'll ever do that, because generally speaking, you're going to have other people do that kind of work for you when you get into the uh, uh, remodeling, re renovation type franchises. Uh, yeah, again, you might not be the one that goes in there and does the actual work itself, but you will know how it is done and how it gets and how to get it done. Uh, some things you can do remotely, for, but for the most part, when you're going through training, you're going to go to their offices and learn everything there is to know how to run the business, bookkeeping, quick, QuickBooks, calling on clients, what to say to them, how to market, how to advertise. Uh, they're going to go through the entire process with you. I know that some of the franchises, you'll start making phone calls right away, calling on potential clients while you're going through training. They'll show you exactly how to do that, what to say, what the process is, how to get them booked uh, with an appointment with an appointment. Uh, they want you right then to be able to just step right into that business and go on that one. Now again, you may not be doing all these things once you get back to your franchise. Generally speaking, you're gonna have other people do it for you, but they're gonna show you everything so that you do know how it is done. Uh, step two is gonna be coaching. <clears throat> so you've gone through the training, they're going to assign you a coach. They did with me, they did with Brian as well. And the coach is gonna set up an appointment with you on a regular basis, once a week, once a day, whatever it takes. And they're going to make sure that you're on track to start building that franchise. They will have given you these goals, step-by-step uh, -step processes in your training, and you will go through them again. And they will make certain that you are accomplishing these goals and doing these things on a regular basis. You're not going to be getting up in the morning thinking, oh, what do I do next? You're going to have a plan. It's already in place. That is why you spent the money on that franchise paying and paying those ongoing royalties. This is what you're getting you're getting that partner that's going to make you, excuse me, that's going to take you through the process and that's going to be with you every step of the way. Now that mentor may be with you for a week or maybe be with you for a few months. A lot of it's just gonna depend on how quickly uh, you take on your new role. They'll always be there to help you and you'll always have that franchise to call upon. Different franchises will handle this differently. They may have weekly calls, go over your goals and may have daily calls to go over your goals. And keep in mind, you made a lot of friends along the way as well. So when you do have questions, not only will your mentor be there for you, but all those franchisees that you've called along the way are also your friends will also help you build your business. Everybody works as a team. Uh, one of the great things about a franchise system. So step three, grand opening. Restaurant franchises or anything that has a brick and mortar uh, type business are going to set up a grand opening for you. And a lot of them will be there at that grand opening as well. They'll do all the press releases. They'll do the marketing. They'll show you how to do it and who to talk to. They'll get everything going for you in advance. Fitness franchises are going to go out and they're going to start helping you with clients right away so that by the time your door opens, you've already got 50, 100 clients that are ready to come in that day or that week and start using that fitness uh, franchise. 
what they want you to do, they want you to get enough clients right away so that your break even is even quicker. Uh, so with those that have the membership model, they're going to start getting those memberships going uh, immediately before you even open up the doors. Uh, step four is franchise meetings. Uh, again, remember all those franchisees that you called upon when you're trying to determine that if, if this is a good franchise system for you or not. <clears throat> all of those franchisees are now your friends. In addition to the franchise are helping you, now you have all those other franchisees in the business that you can call upon and get advice from them on everything. Because if you grow, they grow. They grow, you grow. The system works together as more and more people know who you are. Uh, expect an extensive amount of training, uh, an extensive amount of mentoring, uh, and that's what you're really going to be looking for in a great franchise, for them to be there for you when you need them. Almost all franchise, franchises have meetings at least once a year where all the franchisees get together. Franchise is going to talk about the industry, any changes in the industry itself. Uh, they're keeping you abreast of what's going on in the industry and then if something new, something different is going on. They'll let you know how they're going to be helping you grow in the future. Always attend those meetings. It's a good way to get a lot of good information on that and get together with your friends uh, at least once a year. When you've got all the franchisees in the same room, again, talk to them about their business, how they're doing, what they're doing differently, how they grow. You are not competing with each other since you all have your own individual territories and that no other franchise can come into. So you're all a team on that one. Uh, you learn a lot of new things, make a lot of new friends, and work together towards realizing your goal. Uh, so what's next? Your exit strategy. Should it be an exit strategy or should it be a cash cow? Uh, this brings us to the point where we've now been in the business a number of years. Now what? Uh, do we need to craft an exit strategy or thinking about building that business up to a certain point and then walking away from it? Or do you want to make that a cash cow? At some point in time, maybe to, good, to begin with, you need to establish an exit strategy on that. Uh, always a good thing to think about, you know, what are your goals out five to 10 years from now on that one? Uh, one of the things that we'll examine with you, one of the things I ask is where do you want to be in the next five to 10 years? Uh, Brian accomplished his goal. He made his dreams come true of running his business. He was getting tired of the corporate world and wanted to do something different. So we got him into a franchise, got him trained. He got his first appointment right away and started growing from there. Uh, Brian had a background as a corporate account executive. He grew it up to where he said three years later, I really like my job after all, and I know how to run a business, so why don't I do both? So he ended up selling his remodeling business. That kept him busy full-time. Got a good chunk of money for that. Got his job back, uh, or I think it was a similar job, actually, uh, what he did before. And right now, we are looking at getting Brian into another business that he can run semi-passively on the side in addition to his job. I did that when I was an engineer as well, and eventually I realized I didn't want to do the uh, job thing anymore at all. Brian decided he did like that job thing, decided to go back and do it. That's a personal opinion, you know, on how and what you want to do, but he enjoyed the franchise so much that he wanted to uh, continue running franchises, just not one that was full-time because uh, he liked what he did with his job. We talked about Cat uh, in a former chapter. Cat was building a large number of franchise units. Um, I think we started him with about 33, and now he's at 60 or 80, something like that. He's getting up to 100 of them. He's putting together a group of franchise. Whenever he can buy a large territory, say six to 10 locations, he puts a manager in place for that. He's looking to get to 100 locations. It's about 10 managers, and each one of those managers will then manage about 50 people. But he's only actually managing about 10 people because uh, he just manages the managers. Uh, he does not have an exit strategy. He wants to keep that as a cash cow rather than uh, sell and get out. Uh, so personal opinion on that. Uh, but again, back to Brian, what, what he did was he looked at what it takes to sell a franchise. Selling a franchise is actually quite simple. You just have to let the franchise know you want to exit it. Now, you signed a 10-year agreement with the franchise, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to stay in that franchise for 10 years. You just turn over that franchise location, that territory, to somebody else. Somebody else buys it. Uh, you can get a business broker to do that that's in your area. Uh, you can get me to do it. Uh, but you have to let the franchise know right away. And the franchise uh, will actually let other franchisees know. Most of the time what happens is another franchise that posts you will pick up that territory, especially if you have it running well on that. Uh, but if not, then they'll, the franchisors will let the consultants know. And we as consultants will go out there and find people for you. Uh, typically what you're looking to get for your franchise is about three or four times net is what I see most of them sell for. Uh, a lot of times it may start a little higher, but with all the franchise resales I've done, I've done quite a few, typically around three to four times net plus equipment is what they sell for. 
uh, check with your franchisor first, how it's going to be in the franchise agreement. If there's any fees involved, our franchise attorney will go over that with you before you decide to invest in that franchise. It's generally not a whole lot. You'll see that in the franchise agreement. And people do like to buy existing businesses. I get people quite often that will come in to me. They're only looking for existing franchise businesses to sell, especially when they're doing good. So once you've got your business up, it's doing quite well. It's very easy to find buyers for that. Any questions on that? Go ahead and reach out to me as well. That's it for this episode, <clears throat> Chapter 8. Uh, just invested in a franchise. Now what? Call me anytime you have any questions, 361-772-6401, or email me at greg at franchisemaven.com. Maven is M-A-V as in Victor, E-N.com. And next week, we are going to go over international franchising. Everybody have a great week out there.